Dear guests, dear friends, excellencies, thank you for joining us here today. We are honored by your presence on this uh, very special occasion for my country. For the first time, 66 years ago, after becoming a member of the UN, Albania finally has the opportunity to sit at the UN Security Council. 66 years is a long time, a very, very long time. And throughout our preparations, while we were selecting the team that would represent us, while we were discussing the priorities of our work in the Council, and while we were discussing the thousands of details that this mandate entails, we all felt the historical dimension of this. This is a great responsibility, of course. This is a great privilege, without a doubt. But this is just as much a milestone in the history of modern Albania. It shows how far we have traveled and how much our country and our people have achieved. I remember when I first arrived in the States some 25 years ago, my family and I lived in Massachusetts and I studied there. And one of the things that remains with me to this day from those early years after I arrived was the sense of uneasiness that I felt every time I was asked where I came from. There were those who had no clue and had never heard of Albania. And after all, why would an American kid from Boston know anything about this tiny country somewhere in the Balkans that had just emerged from communism, poor and on the verge of collapse with hundreds of thousands fleeing their country in search of security and a better life in Europe and wherever they could. But it was even worse when they knew where Albania was and whether they had any knowledge of what Albania was like in the early 1990s. Because frankly, there was not much to be proud of. This was not just my experience. This was the experience of thousands of my fellow Albanians who left the ruins of their country during that terrible period of our history. Fast forward, in August of last year, Albania opened its doors to several thousand at-risk Afghans, civil society and women's rights activists, doctors, educators, artists, journalists, who had to flee their country in fear for their lives and their families. I met many of them, and they reminded me so much of myself when, to borrow an expression used by the Prime Minister, I was one of the Afghans of Europe fleeing my country in search of a better future elsewhere. And it was precisely this reflection that made me realize just how far Albania has come and just how different a country it is today from the country that I had to leave behind as a kid. We have gone through tyranny, through collapse. We have gone through poverty and conflict. We have seen our region, our brothers and neighbors devastated by war and destruction. But much has changed since then. Albania is now a modern democracy with the highest representation of women in government. It is a growing and vibrant economy about to open formal negotiations with the European Union. It is an anchor of stability in the region and a net exporter of security, playing a crucial role in consolidating peace and cooperation in the Western Balkans. Frankly, there is much now to be proud of. And it is with this in mind that I say that being in the Security Council is a milestone in the history of modern Albania, that it shows just how far we have traveled and just how much our country and our people have achieved. And I think that it is this experience, the experience of this transformative process, that I think will be the most significant contribution of my country to the Security Council and to addressing some of the most pressing issues of our time. We may differ in land area or population, we may differ in the size of our economies, but when it comes to principles, to what works and what not, to what is right and what is wrong, size does not matter. We come to the Council with a sense of realism of what small countries can achieve, but we also come to the Council with a sense of optimism that even small countries can make an impact on issues such as women, peace and security, or combating violent extremism, human rights and international law, or climate change and security, or increasing the transparency and efficiency of cooperation between nations in the Security Council, these are all our priorities. But in this effort, we know that we cannot achieve anything by going at it alone. 
The only way to have an impact on any of these issues that trouble the world today is by working closely together with all like-minded countries, by striving for common ground and what unites us, even when there are many areas on which we do not see eye to eye. We have been overwhelmed over the past year by how many countries have reached out to us with a desire to work together. And that is precisely what we want to do, work together, so that we can create synergies and turn our presence in the Security Council into just one segment of a relay race where a country picks up on those issues where its predecessor left off in the Council and hands over the file or the baton to those that come to the Council after it when one's mandate is over. This is our vision, this is our hope, and we hope that we will have occasion to work together with as many of you as possible for the sake of a better world. So I thank you all for being here today and showing support. We are very grateful for your friendship and partnership. So now I'd like to invite to take the floor for his remarks, the President of the UN General Assembly, Abdullah Shahid, whose presidency for hope has been acting and motivating despite the various challenges that have been knocking at its door, demanding its immediate attention. Albania is happy to work with you, and I'd also like to thank you for your important and successful initiative, Standing for Vaccine Equity, a welcome call for solidarity worldwide. PGA Shahid, the floor is yours.